Alright, so here we're going to be looking at the sine rule for angles. We've talked about it for finding an unknown side, and now we'll use it for finding an unknown angle. Now, unfortunately, the rule in this format is not given to you exactly on the formula sheet, but let me remind you of what is given to you. So if you take a look at these, we've got little a over sine of big A is equal to little b over sine of big B. This is the one that's been given to you. So to get the formula that you'll use for finding an angle, you literally just flip it upside down. So now sin A will be on top, sin B will be on top, and the little b will be on bottom with the little a. Um, and as we go about using this formula, we'll also see that there will be shortcuts for it. So I'll go through that rearrangement first, and then you can write down the part that you'd like to memorize if you would like to memorize a shortcut for it. So to find the unknown angle big A, what we actually need to do is sin of big A is going to equal to sin of B over little b times A will times that little a to the other side. And as a final step, big A will be equal to sin inverse of all of that stuff. So sin of big B over little b times little a. So this is the one that you can memorize if you need to be memorizing a formula for how to rearrange it for yourself. A is going to be equal to sin inverse, and make sure you use the sin inverse of bracket sin b divided by little b times little a with a bracket. Alright, let's take a look at this. Same steps basically apply again. Let's label our unknown with a big A. So looking at this diagram for the first example, my unknown, I see the x there, I'm going to call this guy big A. And that's my angle. Second step, will be label all other sides and angles. So thinking through how we do it, again, if I'm looking for my unknown angle big A, remember that big A will always be across from little a. And then I can just go around and call this guy little b, and know that little b is always going to be across from angle of 80 here, the big b. So from there, same thing that we will do. Plug into rule. And here you can go straight into your shortcut, if you want, if you've memorized it here. Or you can go to the original rule and work on rearranging it using your algebra skills. So, let's go through that as an example. Just to plug it in, sin of big A that we don't know over 16 is equal to sin of 80 over 21 centimeters. So, if I rearrange this, I will get a is equal to sin inverse of bracket sin 80 over 21 times 16 bracket. And again, that's the shortcut version right there, just using the shortcut formula that you can memorize. So if you go ahead and plug that into your calculator, you will get little, sorry, big A here is equal to 48.6 degrees. So 48.6 degrees for this A. Okay. Um, and I might put here, just in a little parentheses, make sure you use inverse sin for that final step, for this final step here, sin inverse of all that stuff. Regular sin for the other one, but sin inverse to find the final answer. All right, let's do another example. Um, looking at this guy, again, let's start with labeling what we don't know, the unknown. So I see that here is the x, I'm going to call this guy a. And knowing that, I will call the side across from it a. Here I'll have b, and noticing that this guy here is b. So plugging that into the formula, I can do it as a shortcut and say a is equal to sin inverse of sin 58 
divided by 35 times 28. And if I do it this way, I get straight to the answer of 42.7 degrees. So A is equal to 42.7 degrees. And again, that's just our shortcut formula. But if you don't want to do it as a shortcut, you could say sin of A all over 28 is equal to sin of 58 all over 35 and rearrange from there. Again, it doesn't really matter which way you go about it. If you're comfortable with the algebra, go and show all your steps. But if you're not comfortable, you just need to make sure that you actually show everything that is shown in this step here, basically. Because that indicates what all your substitutions were and how you came to that answer. So this is sufficient and it'll be just fine.